years ago, when I first got involved in the conservation of Asian elephants, I noticed one particular sentence in a book by P.D. Tracy. As a young forest officer in Assam in the 30s, Tracy heard of an ancient migratory route of wild elephants on the border between Burma and India through the Chokan Pass. He never saw it himself, so I decided to research the subject. Elephants are great travelers. For thousands of years, they were able to roam freely over a vast territory stretching from Vietnam to the Himalayas and the south of India. But in less than a century, most of their habitat has been destroyed by human activity. Initially trained as an ethnologist in London, Pranya Chauta focused on the human-elephant relationship, which is specific to Asia. This is how she realized the dramatic situation of this highly endangered species and committed herself to its conservation. While preparing for the old elephant route, I asked Mujib Khan to join the expedition. His experience stems from a long line of Mahuts, the legendary elephant trainers of India. The first thing we did was to go to Rangoon, and we realized that it was not practically possible to go from the Burmese side. So we decided to go back to India and try from the Indian side to approach the Chokan Pass. The old elephant route starts somewhere on the sandy banks of the mighty Brahmaputra which is more than 12 miles wide once it leaves the Himalayan range for the plains of Assam. to undertake such an expedition, as the borders have been practically closed since the Second World War and its access is restricted. Even today, the area is politically sensitive, sometimes dangerous, and security remains under army control.
The only road that connects India to northern Burma and China is a reminder of the darkest times in this region's history. The invasion of Burma by the Japanese during the Second World War struck several hundred thousand people for whom it was the first experience of modern times. As the Japanese controlled the sea routes, the Allies decided to build a road to provide supplies from northeast India through northern Burma and into China. To build this road, the only way was to follow the tracks of elephant herds, which had scouted for centuries an area untouched until then. It was called the Lido Road. So fast, 3,727 feet high. That makes it how many meters? About 1,200 meters. Yeah. Bloody cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think this elephant also used this as a corridor to go to India to Burma. They yeah. use the sides of it. Yeah, the sides. A forbidden border always casts a strange spell along its imaginary line. The concept of international borders imposed by man onto nature seems such a foolish abstraction. In 1942, hundreds of thousands of people from the local tribes were enrolled to build the Lido Road through the heart of the Asian elephant habitat. Casualties were so high that it earned the name Man a Mile Road. Elephants were used to carry logs, weapons and supplies and sometimes trained to haul the heaviest cannons of the time. Thousands of them died, and their habitat was severely damaged for a road which was practically never used after the war. Once in a while, the local Tangsa tribes are allowed to cross the border and meet their relatives on the other side. Just as herds of wild elephants migrate, the tribes keep contact, exchange goods and sometimes a young bride. <laughs> It is important to understand the life of the local people in order to find clues about the movements of elephants. Both have the same basic needs, such as water and bamboo. They are in direct competition for the same natural resources. Our brief incursion into Burma revealed that, in order to find traces of wild elephants, we have to head north. But to move forward, we have to find and rent some elephants, who will carry our equipment and provisions. Look 
कहीं जाने नहीं मिलती बात में ये फोम आता ही नहीं कौन है हाँ हाँ see you can see tas marks here a male has been playing with her going above knowing that we need very good elephants to undertake such a difficult trip mujib inspects carefully the condition of the animals he is worried about the shape of the male's tusk which is a bother to the animal and he tells his concern to the owner they are aware that you can make the column, which is widening of the teeth and thickening of the teeth. If you cut it, he is worried because as it is, his elephant is a little naughty, that it might get worse or that he might completely cool down, which is that he would get, uh, would not come into mass. So there's a risk of the two that he doesn't want to take. But what do you say, Mujib? This is a look of the hat. He doesn't think that it will get bad, he should cut it, because the, the elephant now, as it is the way it is, looks at his tusks, the points of his tusks. And when he looks at the points of his tusks, they're obsessed with hitting something. So he says, you cut it, it will go full, and it'll come into must, and then after that you shouldn't cut it and the elephant will be better. He would not be so naughty. The elephant owner finally accepts our offer, and immediately we check the conditions of the elephant's harnesses and saddles. They are old and totally inadequate. One more day is lost. This is what you put on top of the elephant first, and then you put this, and it's not good enough. It's not enough for all of us to sit on it to go around. Full luggage, full luggage. To put the luggage on ourselves is not possible. If it's not so small, uh, you can't, the mouth cannot move. If he's going to sit on the neck, if there's a lot of stuff, it's going to be a problem to go back. Mujib has a complete experience as an elephant man, from making soft ropes which will not hurt the skin of the animal, to improvising saddles with the most basic material. For 20 days, we're taking plenty of masala. We're taking about 50 kilos of rice, paddy for the elephants, 25 kilos, uh, sugar, 7 kilos, onions, 3 kilos, and pepper, 500 grams, uh, garlic, uh, one and a half, two kilos. Because further we go, we will not get anything that's fresh. We will get maybe pulses and grains. But the other things like coconut, like ghee, which is uh, saturated butter, like oil, it's going to be difficult. So we're going to try and take for 20 days for 15 people, basically. And hopefully we should carry on with that. <laughs>
The local mahouts don't seem to know how to tie the saddles, or gardis as we call them. We have to deal with steep terrain, cross rivers. The ropes and the elephants should not be too tight, but the load should be secure. Harnessing will have to take place every morning, so the boys have to learn fast or time will be wasted. Tomorrow we hit the road. Their plan is to follow and survey the valley of the Naudun River, which goes deep inside Burmese territory with the Chokan Pass as their final point. If they can cover 12 miles per day, they should be there in 10 days. Well, as you can see, we're in beautiful tropical forest, but it dribbles all the time, which is not normally the case. It's a, just a summer. Isn't yeah, it's a summer drizzle. You have a truck that is stuck, and this, that's what has spoiled the road, otherwise it would have been quite all right. And only elephants and men can walk, and we have 138 kilometers to go. Eh? We have found shelter in an abandoned government bungalow, much better than our first night under the rain. <laughs> the temperature has suddenly dropped. We find the elephants freezing cold in the morning. They are shivering. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to give something to warm up the elephants. They've been cold all night. We have some jaggery, some beaten rice, as they call it, and some rum. Okay, they're going to be a quarter for each elephant. <laughs> Oh, 
The elephants refuse to step on the bridge. Bridges are always a problem with elephants. They feel the vibrations under their feet. And if the stream is loud, it is impossible. Right now we are the 40 mile mark from Miao. Yesterday we've tried to cross the Burma Nala, which is possible, but we don't know what is further. There might be a landslide, but that's one option. The second option is to go back and go down the river and try and cross the Noading, which uh, with the rain that there is, it might be flooded, we don't know. First sign of human presence, probably the Lisus, a tribe of questionable reputation originating from Yunnan in China. 
the conservative Namda Fun National Park, where we are now, has warned us about the land encroachments and the heavy poaching performed by the Lisus. They have reportedly burnt forest installations and threatened the life of the forest guards. I want first-hand information on this little-known community. They probably know more about elephants in this forest than anyone else. आपके बस्ती का नाम बता सकते हैं और किस तरह के आदमी आप लोग हैं और आप क्या करते हैं और कब आए इधर शिदी शिदी और लिसु कुछ नहीं है लिसु लिसु मल युबिन लिसु युबिन दे आर लिसु युबिन पीपल एंड दे बिलोंग टू द शिदी क्लान पहले केती बाड़ी के पहले आप क्या करते थे लिसु वाले लिसु वाले पहले तो कुछ नहीं सिर्फ खेती में सिर्फ खेती में और जंगल का कुछ हंटिंग वगैरह करते हैं वो नहीं वो नहीं कुछ भी नहीं सिर्फ पेट के लिए सिर्फ पेट के लिए अच्छा According to the headman, the Lisus are mainly agriculturists. They hunt, but just to feed themselves. He says that wild elephants still use the Chokan Pass to come from Burma, but only in December and January. He has been there in 1974 and he has seen traces of wild elephants. During World War II, RAF pilots had orders to shoot down any elephant convoy they saw that might be taking Japanese arms and supplies in the region. Sometimes they even killed their own. The war inflicted a severe blow to virgin forest. Timber was extracted heavily to supply the war industry, and ironically, the elephants themselves were used in the destruction of their own habitat. The war has taught these people a poor value of the forest. I have a feeling that the village headman has not told me the whole truth. Maybe he cannot. After all, the life of his people is a permanent battle for survival. Day five. The journey is developing in all of us an uncontrollable feeling of despair as nature shows its harshest face. for the elephants to go across with the load. So the boys are trying to make a raft, which I'm not really convinced, to take the load across. So we shall see. Four hours are spent to cross the river while the elephants take a difficult detour. On the other side, the men notice some marks on the ground. There's a tamba here, the hoof mark also. Yeah. 
There's the guts. There is the blood. Look at it. It went on top. You can smell it, it smells dead. I think it's a samba female. It's female samba? Yeah. What I think is probably an animal has killed it because you see the entrails over there. It's taken by people, I think, because they see... Someone has cut it yeah, yeah, with fine marks of... Uh, yeah, but I, I think, think so. an animal has killed it first and then a human being got to it. Yeah, possibly. आप क्या सोचते हैं ये ये जानवर ने पहले मारा या आदमी ने ये जानवर जानवर पहले मारा है और फिर आदमी ने काटा किस तरह का जानवर ये जानवर यहाँ का है अच्छा ये thinks an animal has killed it first and then the human beings have got the meat इधर ना मुझे भी सेल्स मार माइक व्हाट यू सी द फुटप्रिंट ऑन द वुड एंड ओवर देयर इज अ टाइगर एंड व्हाट यू सी हियर आफ्टर दैट आर वाइल्ड डॉग्स ही सेज देयर इज बीन अ स्मॉल टाइगर एंड अ वाइल्ड डॉग्स दैट हैव कम लेटर बट देयर इज ओनली वन थिंग व्हाई आई एग्री विद हिम ओनली द टाइगर एंड अ बिग पैंथर व्हिच इज रेयर क्लीन्स द एंट्रेल्स ऑफ एनी एनिमल बिफोर ईटिंग इट दिस इज एन एलिफेंट फुटप्रिंट दिस इज एन एलिफेंट्स फुटप्रिंट एंड दैट इज एन एलिफेंट्स फुटप्रिंट But the question is whether it is tamed or is it wild? Ye jungli aati hai ya pala ho aati hai? Jungli aati. How do you say it's wild elephant? Jungli. Jungli. Why do you say it's a wild? Kyu jungli aati hai? Jungla ah gor ka aati ya nahi aata hai to. This is because no tamed elephants come here basically. Well, this is the first wild footprint we see, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It looks more like a single. The single. Yeah, it's a single. You can see further. It's a single. मुझे And you have several of them leading, all the way. So there is only one possibility: he would have come from that side, made a whole round, and come back here and gone back into the forest. That's the only possibility. So we can actually estimate the age of animal. Yeah, circumferences into two yeah. will give the idea of uh, height of the height. animal. One meter sixteen. No, one meter. Sorry, one meter twenty. Answer. Twenty. One meter average. Uh, one point ten average. So. Into two. Into two. So two we point. have two meters twenty centimeters. मतलब that means seven foot four inches. तो हाथी का age. What would be the age between twenty and thirty? Oh, तोड़ा. तीस के अंदर है. So this is a bit under thirty. and it would be a male because it's alone so far the information gathered from the lisu headman and the footprints are the only clues i have found in this vast territory i don't think i feel beaten but i think it's been endless every step we take there's always a problem since the last few months so there's been a lot of rain and today's the first day that we have very little rain but uh, there's no hope that it's going to stop raining i think and the plan is to try to get to this chokan pass or to see if there is another route uh, a point of communication between burma that's just behind me of uh, 20 kilometers away and india because that is a point of communication for elephants between india and southeast asia that's the last patch left So I want to see if the wild elephants still communicate. 
There's no real road to get there from here. It's go through the jungle. You have to make a road cutting through and you find this old road, go to the Chokan Pass. There's no, the road doesn't exist now. It stopped till uh, the Lisu village we went yesterday. And uh, we cannot go because there is a landslide and it's impossible to go. So you have to go inside the jungle on top of slopes, high slopes and slippery slopes because of monsoon. So it's very risky, I think. I mean, if you take men, it's possible, but you have to take food. And if you take food, you have to take more men. So it's endless, this line of men and food. The use of pack elephants reduces the number of men and also shows that the terrain is accessible for an elephant, basically, practically. The crucial point in finding this uh, migration route between uh, India and Southeast Asia is to see if there is a communication link between the two population of elephants that exist in these two countries. This is the last point of communication. That means blood, genetic mixing. All around in Asia you have population that has increased, you have modernity that's overtaken forests, and and you have elephants in pockets everywhere. So there's hardly, even in, within the same country, there's hardly any communication sometimes between one herd and the other. Day seven, it is raining constantly. The terrain is increasingly steep and dangerously wet. How much further can we go in these conditions? I do not want to push the elephants any further. We are running short of provisions and we have only covered 52 miles. We have no choice but to go back to our starting point. Return the elephants, then hire some porters, buy new provisions and try again. Luckily, the weather clears up and in four days' march we cover 45 miles. We have nine porters with us right now. Six of them are chakmas from the hills of Chittagong in Bangladesh. Of the other three, one is from Tibet, one from Nepal, and the third one from Bhutan. At the 62-mile point, a huge landslide forms an obstacle which would have been impossible to negotiate safely with pack elephants. The soil is soft and we have to progress on unstable rocks. Uh, 
Our routine is now well rehearsed. We wake up at 4.30 in the morning. At 6, we eat rice and lentils with black tea. Then we walk non-stop from 7 until 3.30 p.m. Again, rice and lentils. We hang our plastic sheets between two trees as makeshift tents. At 5, it's already dark. So at 6, everyone... we hardly find traces of elephants. My feeling is that the elephants in this area have either been killed or captured in great numbers. Reports from the early 1900s revealed that thousands of elephants were captured and used in the extraction of timber. Many elephants died in the process. But poaching is another reason for the decrease in the elephant population. A young Lisu hunter has come to our camp as we are about to leave. He is shy, but accepts to show us his poisoned arrows and demonstrate his bow. No, he's come here because of uh, better soil to do agriculture, so he thinks uh, it's better than Gandhi ground. It's finished. <laughs> Well, they keep communicating with all the other tribe members around the valley, and I think it's even though it's long, it's hard, the road, they still do it. I ask him where his elders are coming from, but he does not reply. Probably because they have come illegally from China and Burma. Vijoynagar is the last village before the Chokan Pass. It is 103 miles of jungle from the nearest town in India. From there, the remaining 14 miles up to the Chokan Pass cannot be covered without the assistance of local guides. I went to report to the local authorities. We have been allowed to stay in the government rest house. The local officer has promised to provide us with more rice and lentils. There are no shops and supplies are limited.
My thoughts turned towards the man who led me to the chalk and pass. P.D. Stracy, a founder of wildlife conservation in modern India, died in 1977. He is my guide above all. It is now 27 days since we have taken our first step in the jungle, but the 176 miles covered so far were just mere practice for what we have to go through now. The porters are reluctant to go forward. They believe that the Chokan Pass is covered with ice. Going up that river was like traveling back to the earliest beginnings of the world, when vegetation rioted on the earth and the big trees were kings. Now I know what Joseph Conrad meant. Going up that river was like walking into the heart of darkness. The porters have decided to halt. We have just to follow our three guides for the last curve of the river. The narrow passage between the two hills is now blocked, but with heavy rains, the river will soon clear the way. See, that's the Chokan Pass. And the landslide has blocked the way and has created a pond, so it's impossible to go. Can I put it on the side? It's too high. Do you want to try? Mm -hmm. Wild elephants would manage to cross, taking their time to find an easier way. The advantage they have over human beings is the capacity to resist heavy rains, cross deep rivers and feed themselves on the spot. So that is the famous Chokan Pass. They say that there's an old elephant migratory route. I think that hill behind is Burma. Yes, the hill behind over there is Burma. And historically, the first Ahom king that were the most famous rulers in Assam. He used this pass and came across. After that, the first European in history was Errol Gray to have used this pass, it was in 1892. He took about 40, 50 elephants from uh, Assam into Burma using the Chokan Pass. Thirtieth day, back to Vijayanagar. The porters, mostly animists, were frightened by the Chokan Pass. They have decided to quit and go home. We have to clear our accounts. The officer in charge said that a government helicopter would bring some supplies and may take us back. We just depend on a perfect tune-up between the weather conditions and the goodwill of the Indian administration. For one week now, we have been waiting. <laughs> 